conservative new media viewers, a new scientific study from the University of Michigan could help explain near-death experiences in human beings. A team of scientists, including Dr. Jimo Borgigian, tested dying rats in order to learn more about how the brain functions when an animal dies. We will include information in the video description below the video player so you can go and read a BBC article about this story for yourself. What the researchers found was that when the rats died, their brains actually became more active for a 30-second period than the brains of the rats were when they were alive. During this 30-second time period following the death of the rats, their brains had a surge of electrical activity involving a type of brainwave known as a gamma oscillation. According to the BBC report we used to make this video, gamma oscillations are high-frequency brainwaves. Dr. Borgigian seems to believe that the heightened activity of the brain at death combined with the area of the brain where the heightened activity takes place may help to explain the phenomenon of near-death experiences in humans. Of course, the observations were made on rats and not on human beings. Thus, it is unclear whether the same findings might be observed in human brains. Still, this research is likely to boost the views of those who favor science over religious or paranormal explanations for the universal phenomenon of near-death experiences. The picture you are looking at now is a visual representation of a near-death experience. It seems many people who have gone through the experience talk about the feeling of going through a tunnel with a bright light at the end of it, as can be seen in the image. Some of the people who have had near-death experiences have seemingly had their own intellectual transformations due to the experience. For these people and their many readers, the near-death experience is apparently very real, and can provide proof or validity of God, heaven, and the afterlife. Probably the most notable among these figures is Dr. Eben Alexander, a neurosurgeon who wrote the book Proof of Heaven. It is my understanding that Dr. Alexander was a skeptic about such near-death experiences and favored a more organic explanation for them rather than a supernatural one, before his own near-death experience took place. Apparently, many are still skeptical of Alexander's claims. Such doubt, however, will likely mean little to readers of his best-selling book, as well as to those who already were favorably disposed to more religious explanations for the visions and occurrences apparently experienced by those who return from being clinically dead or very close to it. Another popular author on the subject is Mary Neal, an orthopedic surgeon. Dr. Neal wrote the best-selling book To Heaven and Back, which chronicled her own near-death experiences. Unlike Dr. Alexander, Dr. Neal seemed to have more belief in God and the afterlife before her own brush with dying. Having read the majority of Dr. Neal's book, I can say that she seemed extremely convinced that her near-death experience was real and that heaven and the afterlife are real. One thing that I can recall from Dr. Neal's book is that she seemed to gain some precognition for certain events in her future once she came back from the quote-unquote dead. I believe Dr. Neal felt that an angel she encountered during her near-death experience directed her towards events that would happen for the rest of her life on Earth, thus giving her some measure of being able to see into her own future. 
As the University of Michigan study is further analyzed and as more experiments are done in the future, including ones performed on humans, it will be interesting to see if more can be learned about this phenomenon and about the nature of human consciousness in general. For now, though, it is likely that skepticism of the near-death experiences will continue, regardless of how real they are for those who have gone through them and how real they may seem for those who believe in God, heaven, and the afterlife. Some people want to believe, and some people do not, and each is likely to find and hear what they want to find and hear in every report, study, and new near-death experience. Near-death experiences, then, will remain another unsolved mystery for now. And given the nature of the subject matter and how strong beliefs are on both sides of the fence, my guess is that near-death experiences will always remain an unsolved mystery, regardless of how much proof comes in on either side. That's it for now. Thumbs up, thumbs down on this video. Your comments below. What do you think about this subject? Have you read any of these books? Do you believe them? Have you had a near-death experience? Do you believe that they're genuine? Do you believe that they involve the supernatural? They involve God? That they're real? Or do you think they're just a function of the brain and organic processes? As many people seem to feel, many people do believe that. And they think that basically what people experience is kind of uh, the, the brain playing a trick on them or this type of electrical surge and what is being talked about in this new study. So what's your take on that? It's a very interesting subject. It's a very touchy subject for a lot of people, as you might imagine. But it is a really fascinating thing to learn about and to discuss. We encourage you to come and join the Conservative New Media Facebook group. We have over 2,500 people there and counting, and we'd love to have you come and join that group. This is Paul F. Villarreal for Conservative New Media. Thanks a lot for watching. We will talk to you again soon.